Boom, and we're live. What's happening, beautiful people? Good morning, America. Good afternoon, Europe, and welcome, everyone, to our live stream. Happy Monday, everyone. How are you guys doing? Let me know how you're doing in the comments box below. I hope you have an amazing, amazing start of a week and an amazing week uh, ahead of you. Now, let uh, let me know how you're doing, guys, if you're struggling with anything. And if you like what you see, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and support us in delivering more great content, guys. It helps us a lot. One click, one subscribe, and it means a lot uh, to us. Be supportive. Don't be haters. Come on. It's only Monday. Now, let's get down to business, guys, and see what is happening in the markets today, 1st of February, 2021. The Reddit crowd takes on silver after GameStop, pushing the price of, uh, of the metal to $30 an ounce. ExxonMobil and Chevron stock price rallies as merger talks boost investors' confidence. U.S. Democrats reject the $1.9 trillion stimulus bill proposed by Joe Biden. Where do we take it from here? Crude oil ranges around $50 to uh, 50 a barrel and Bitcoin gains after Elon Musk comments. In a few minutes, we're going to have Neil Wilson joining us from the heart of London with the latest news from, uh, from London. <music> Discover how some of the top executives are trading their own companies with our insider trades tool. See who's been buying or selling stock and what their trades say about insider sentiment. Use this unique big data tool to make more informed stock trades. That's higher trading from MarketX. Right, and as promised, guys, we have uh, Neil Wilson with us from the heart of London. Happy Monday, Neil. Good afternoon. How are you? Hello, hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm I'm very upset today for some reason. I don't know why I'm picking on everyone. How are you? Yeah, I'm I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah, it's another another bright start to the week. So uh, interesting start, of course, with silver moving, um, as you've been discussing. So yeah, it's uh, another another um, interesting uh, week ahead of us. I think. We saw a lot of countries having a bit of difficulties uh, in terms of the vaccine. Uh, Neil, what is the situation in the UK with the uh, with the vaccine? Any shortages so far? No, not so far. I think the UK is doing uh, a rather good job of vaccinating people, at least with the first dose. Um, we're we're now you know comfortably um, comfortably ahead of Europe in terms of vaccinating people, and I think we're you know we are. Um, I think we're up to about nine million or something like that. So really, really getting uh, a lot of doses in. I think we had. Uh, nearly 600,000 doses recorded yesterday um, in a single 24-hour period. So, you know, progress being made. And, you know, we've got, um, I think we're on track to deliver those 15 million doses by the 15th of February. So hopefully um, the, uh, you know, the sort of hospital admissions, that will take care of basically 90% 90, 90 of hospital admissions. And therefore, we can sort of quickly move forward back to some sort of semblance of normality thereafter. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Now, today I want to approach the hottest topic now, the Robin Hood uh, issue and the Reddit crowd. I chose not to talk about it on Thursday or Friday as we didn't have all the details about it, but today we do. So let's try and explain everyone what happened last week. Are you up for it? We can give it a go. <laughs> all right. So we had a group of retail traders basically called uh, Wall Street Bets. Bear with me for a second. Let me bring them uh, on the screen. Where are they? There they are. Okay. Okay. So this is the Reddit group. Yeah, the Wall Street Bets that uh, took on the hedge funds and managed to pump a couple of stocks to the point where the big hedge funds were losing a ton of money. Yeah, and the trading platform called uh, Robin Hood suspended trading for retail traders. Correct so far? They did percent for some of these stocks, yeah. All right. Since then, various investigations have started. Uh, it's all over the news. Yeah, it's all over uh, social media channels. Okay, we saw SEC starting an investigation on the legality of the platform suspending the trading activity for retail traders. Have I missed out on anything so far, Neil? Um, I would just say there's been uh, some of the moves in the market have been exceptional. And, and you know, it's... Um, it's interesting to see how we, we, we've got into silver today and that's that's really um you know it's one thing when you move one stock a couple of you know a couple hundred percent is one you know it's a big deal but you start moving the entire silver market by 20 percent that's that's arguably an even bigger deal exactly so my question now is what caused this trade war between retail traders and uh and hedge funds neil what was the catalyst well i mean the wall street 
Bet's uh, thread on Reddit has been going for some time now, and it, uh, it's exploded in popularity. But there's a sort of um, there seems to have been a build up of momentum behind some posts, um, a couple of sort of leading sort of posters, uh, people on the thread uh, starting to try and pick on pick out um, hedge fund shorts. So they, they've been looking at stocks that have been heavily shorted, uh, stocks that have uh, been sort of unloved by the market. So um, are quite illiquid stocks, are quite thinly traded um, and with heavy short positions. And that that landed them on um, on uh, on GME, GameStop, as well as AMC Entertainment, BlackBerry, Bed Bath & Beyond, uh, Nokia and, and some others as well, but, but chiefly GameStop. Uh, that sort of drove the headlines anyway. Um, and they, they figured out a pretty good strategy of um, squeezing their shorts by really bidding it up, not selling, and coordinating some kind of effort there. Uh, so coordinating on, on the forum to buy them, also using some quite interesting call, call option strategies. To, um, so you're not only forcing a short squeeze, you've got a gamma squeeze, whereby the dealers... Uh, the dealers are selling these call options are needing to buy the underlying stock in order to yeah. hedge their position. And so that just creates this sort of cycle and swirl of, of um, upward trend in the market for these particular names. Um, and uh, yeah, it seems to be sort of this kind of argument of fighting, you know, fighting hedge funds. That's sort of what's driving it. Um, but of course, it's, it's probably a little bit more complicated than that. I would think that probably hedge funds uh, what you saw, obviously, a lot of short covering. Uh, I think short, uh, hedge funds lost $20 billion on their shorts last month in total, according to S, uh, S3 Partners, which monitors that. Um, so, yeah, it's been it's been incredible. But I think, you know, short covering, you've got retail retail's buying and holding. So there's not, there's not been that much, you know, maybe as much sort of offer on the table as you might normally get. Uh, re- hedge funds covering, but also I think a lot of institutional plays here where they're front running these trades, um, you know, question marks over whether Robinhood is sell- by selling, the it sells an awful lot, I think about 40% of its order flow goes to Citadel, which is one of these hedge funds that people have been talking about. You know, are they, you know, are they taking that data, that order flow and essentially just front running every retail client trade? So they know they know in a sort of split second beforehand what the retail clients are doing. Therefore, they can jump in ahead of them, as it were. So lots of lots of things going on there. Um, and uh, silver's being swept up in it as well. Right. Question. Do retail traders always have the power of moving the markets their way, Neil? Or this was a one off thing? Because I don't I don't really I believe it's yeah, can It's it's very unusual. I've not really seen anything quite like it. I mean, it's it's not um, in the sense it's a speculative bubble. Um, that is nothing new. That that we we always get speculative bubbles, and it's driven by by crowds crowding into trades. Um, I think what's unusual here is probably that it's um, it's been a coordinated effort with a an agreement, a sort of agree, right, we're going to bid up this stock, right, let's, you know, and that's the plan, whereas, you know, many years before it just sort of happens organically, people see a stock moving up, and then they get in, and then the next person gets in, and before you know it, there's lots of news around it, and, and, and before you know it, it gets, it gets, you know, to a top. This is this was pre, predetermined by the re, by a crowd of traders. Now, I mean, I don't know if it's manipulation, it's con- it probably could be classed as concert trading. Um, it's, it's disruptive to the market for sure, um, and I think you know the, you're going to see the SEC need to do something about it. What, whatever it is they do, I'm not sure. And it might be that what happens is, you know, some of the institutions get burnt. You know, Robin Hood could, could get burnt quite badly by this, and that could be a big problem for the market. So even if you don't say it's manipulation, what it is is disruptive and um, has implications therefore for hedge funds, for Robin Hood and, and others. This is not a normal practice. I mean, going public and announcing, come on, let's boycott silver today or let's boycott this company or this hedge fund. Is this normal market practice, Neil? No, (laughs) it's definitely not. I mean, I think that's the thing. It's sort of it's it's designed. It's designed not only is it saying let's bid up this stock and, you know, way beyond um, anything it could be valued at. Um, It's also saying the reason we're doing that is to attack hedge funds. Um, Exactly. Which, you know, I, I... 
I don't quite understand myself. I don't. I, I don't see anything wrong with naked short selling. It, it it's been a practice. It's been, you know, uh, on the go for, for for centuries, or for certainly for for decades here. And uh, you know, it's it's um, it's it's a useful thing. It, it exposes bad companies. It exposes um, you know Enron, Wirecard. You know, I remember two years ago we were talking about how. German regulators ban short selling on Wirecard. The problem wasn't the short sellers. The problem was it was a complete fraud. And yeah. you know, I know Tesla's got a lot of fans, but you know, there's an argument that that's another example where the reason there's lots of shorts out is because you know it's potentially a fraud. And so it's not it's not a bad thing to have short interest in a stock. I think it just it goes to highlight um, some of the problems that that need to be exposed. And, and the thing is, I mean, we saw. Last week, Citroen Research is thrown in the towel. So Citroen Research is a, a key cornerstone of the Wall Street short selling community. It's been issuing short, uh, re, you know, research, highlighting short um, opportunities for 20 years. And last week it said it would no longer do that. It will only focus on, on the long side. So, you know, there's been some um, there's been some damage done in the market in the last uh, five, five, seven days, um, irrespective of what happens from now. But can can retail traders really compete with the hedge funds? Because what do you need to start a hedge fund in terms of, of money versus what a retail trader can do? I mean, I, I'm sure if I talk to 10,000 retail traders and we all put money, everything we have, we don't have the, the physical power of moving the market. We're competing with a hedge fund. So this leads me to the to the next question. What should I do now as a retail trader? Go with the Reddit crowd, stay with the hedge funds, or just remain independent? Well, it's probably best to do your own research as always, but I, I you know, it might be worth looking at the, you know, look at that Wall Street bets forum. Just have a look. Uh, if you've not already, then have a look and see what's happening. I mean, because there's been um there's been a lot of a lot of volatility around these names. And so, you know, if you wanna if you wanna trade that, then that's fine. But um, I would just say that anything that's being that's this volatile is very risky. Um, and with all these cases, you know, sooner or later, GameStop will revert to where it should be, which is, you know, sort of twenty dollars. <laughs> so that'll happen sooner or later. It's just it's awkward. Time. Very awkward. The beginning of 2021. Now, the other thing that caught my attention today was Elon Musk's uh, statement that uh, Bitcoin is on the verge of uh, being more widely expected, like we didn't know that. The statement pushed Bitcoin price up 14 percent. Yeah, in a matter of minutes or hours. Yeah, and considering Elon Musk did not hold any Bitcoin until recently. Yeah, again, I see this as potential, you know, a bit of market manipulation. And I'll explain to you why. Elon Musk announced that he will exchange half of his net worth into Bitcoin, yeah? And a few days later, we see the Bitcoin going through the roof, going to 40 grand. What is the point of making this announcement if you believe inside that Bitcoin has real value? Well, I mean, it's uh, <laughs> Elon Musk on Twitter is always a bit challenging. I mean, he's, he's got a checkered past there. You know, he was done by the SEC, I think, for... It wasn't quite manipulation, but when he, he said he had funding secured on his four hundred and twenty dollars take private plan, you know, which is a load of nonsense. Elon Musk is one of these guys. He's going to tweet stuff like that, and you've got to watch it. Um, it can be beneficial to you, or it could be bad for you, but um, it's just something to keep an eye out for. I would think. I I think it shows that you know there's there's certain people out there that are are happy to to, to jump on the bandwagon and drive an agenda, whatever that is, and. So he's, you know, with Chama, uh, whatever his name is, and, and the this social capital guy, you know, these guys are out for their own, they're out for their own ends. So you've got to be careful with him. Yeah. Exactly. This is what upset me a bit because we saw how Bitcoin was pulling back. Yeah, remember, we both did the analysis and we saw Bitcoin on a, on a downtrend, which was 100% normal and natural to happen after such a rally. Yeah, because people are, are closing their positions, they're cashing out. And now someone like Elon Musk, yeah, with a huge amount of Bitcoin, comes uh, out with a statement like this. Why would you make a statement like this to push the Bitcoin price a bit higher when you can clearly see that the Bitcoin price is, is tumbling? Well, it's, it's pretty obvious to me why you do that. It's, it's, to, it's to force the price higher. Because you know you what this reminds me of? Yeah. 
of uh, JP Morgan uh, situation a few years ago when uh, Jamie Dimon said uh, Bitcoin is a fraud I don't believe in cryptocurrencies da 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 and shortly after he made the announcement that JP Morgan is launching its own cryptocurrency yeah exactly. it's a everyone's, everyone everyone is always talking their own book that's the one the one thing to remember I think so can I still trade support and resistance uh, levels, Neil? Or we should all watch the news, watch, read it. Because Wall Street bets did something that will give them even more popularity than they already had. Okay, So can we still trade support resistance levels or it's all in the hands of uh, news? No, I think so. I think you can definitely still trade. I mean, Bitcoin's always a bit troublesome with that because it's, yeah. it's open to manipulation you know, with Tether and, and all that. I, always be a bit careful with bitcoin uh, in general but um yeah i mean i think you can you know support and resistance levels and, and chart analysis just uh, describes what's going on in the market it shows you where there's buyers and where there's sellers so i think it's perfectly reasonable to do that and, and it still you know it still works um the you know some of the time maybe not all the time but um, <laughs> it still works um still a useful thing to have and um you know i think so key resistance key support levels are important because you, you know you get a feel for where the market clearly there's clearly buyers above or below or sellers above or below you know you get a feel for that from these sort of levels so uh, and that is important because a lot of the time the stops and limits and things are placed you know just beyond these levels or whatever just inside and so um you know it is important i think to to still to still pay attention to these things Right, I'm with you. Now, one thing I want to show you, and then I'll uh, I'll let you go. Where are we? There we are. Right, we're looking at the Bitcoin charts. I don't know if you can see them. There we are. Okay, and this is what happened after um, Elon Musk's uh, statement. Yeah, we saw Bitcoin rallying from 32.425 on Bitfinex up to 38.483. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was a big move. <laughs> yeah, one single tweet. I, I'm I'm having twenty tweets a day, and no one even replies to them. <laughs> and Elon Musk <laughs> had one, and he managed to move the price of the market. Right. Still, we have a big week uh, ahead of us. What uh, what should we keep an eye on this week, Neil? Um, well, you got um, the uh, Bank of England meeting on uh, Thursday. Well, the, the meeting. Wednesday, but the, the 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 announcement on Thursday from the Bank of England, so chatter about negative rates could weigh on the pound. Something to watch out for. Um, we've seen the dollar really battling um, sort of key key kind of support levels at the moment, and really trying to hold. Uh, seems to be holding for the time being. So we could get um, you know dollar. The dollar does come back. That's going to be a problem for the rest of the market. Um, Amazon Alphabet earnings due up this week, I think, you know, so, you know, looking at based on Apple and Netflix earnings and Facebook record revenues, record income for Facebook last week should be pretty solid for Amazon and Alphabet, probably going to beat expectations. Um, and then um, non-farm payrolls day up on, uh, on Friday. So um, I think the non-farm payrolls, the interesting thing is that we saw that a couple of week, weekly initial claims prints in the middle of January, the so beginning, first couple of weeks of Jan. So just looking to see whether or not that, um, you know, has played out into, uh, you know, into a soft monthly number, what it says about the US economy and the recovery and so on. So uh, that's, the, that's the other thing to watch this week. All right, I'll do a live one for, for the NFP. I'll try and do a bit of live trading if compliance uh, agrees with it. Right, Neil Wilson, thank you ever so much for being with us today. I'll see you towards the end of the week, probably one day ahead of uh, the NFP. And let's see what on earth this week uh, has for us. Neil, thank you so much. Have a great week. Thank you. Cheers. Right, we had Neil Wilson with us today, guys, with uh, a lot of news, a lot of um, a lot of information. We're coming back live in 30 seconds with the charts of the day and the signals of the day, guys. We're already 20 minutes into the US trading session. Stay tuned.
keep your finger on the market pulse with the News Alerts tool. Stay up to date on the latest sentiment across all the major asset classes. Uncover bullish or bearish signals tied to specific assets that could be developing before major price moves. And track how news sentiment correlated with price in the past. Track the news volume on an asset, its fear index, and get a better feel for its underlying strength. All with News Alerts, your central hub for market information. That's higher trading from MarketX. Right, and we're back, beautiful people, with uh, some stocks, guys. You know I love you. You know I can't uh, walk away without giving you some uh, some stocks to keep an eye on. We're looking at GameStop uh, stock, which uh, fell 0.4%. AMC Entertainment uh, stock rose 20%, and BlackBerry rose 3.1%. As volatility in a handful of uh, heavily short uh, shorted stocks continued against the backdrop of uh, continued restrictions in trading by Robinhood and others. ExxonMobil uh, stock rose one3 uh, percent uh, and Chevron uh, stock climbed 1.4 percent after the Wall Street Journal reported that the oil giants discussed a merger last uh, year as the oil price slumped into negative territory. The paper described uh, the talks as preliminary, but such a deal, if uh, were to occur, would uh, be one of the largest in corporate history. So very, very um, interesting to uh, to watch. We have a breaking news. Wall Street opens higher as uh, squeeze on hedge funds uh, eases. Dow uh, Jones up 230 points, guys. We're going to get to the charts in just a minute. Now, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What else uh, do we have? Virgin Galactic uh, rose 9.3% after the company announced on uh, Monday that it will redo its uh, aborted December uh, flight test as early as February 13, even after Morgan Stanley downgraded its investment stance to equal weight from uh, overweight after the stock's recent sharp gains. Now, Tesla also rose 3.1% after uh, Piper Sandler raised its price target to a street high of $1,200 per share from $515 a share, citing new opportunities that will pay out uh, over decades. Okay, over decades, guys. Don't jump the gun yet. All right. Uh, CureVac stock rose 12% with the German drug maker set to get help from a buyer for its experimental COVID-19 vaccine in order to boost its manufacturing capacity. So keep on on CureVac. That's an interesting one to, uh, to look at. It might do really, really, really well. Now, let's have a quick look at the charts of the day, guys, and the signals of the day. We are already 20 minutes into the, um, the U.S. trading session. We saw a big, big spike on crude oil. Uh, a few minutes ago at the U.S. markets open, 52.59 for uh, crude oil as things uh, stand right now, with an un undecided RSI trading above the 50% mark, which usually indicates potential uptrend for uh, for the asset, and with an overbought uh, stochastic that is currently pointing downwards. Overall, the oil price is well supported by that 200 moving average, yeah, the red line that you see going from left to right. So anything uh, above that uh, might uh, be translated into buying power. Anything beyond that might be uh, translated into a bit of selling power. Now, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's have a quick look at the euro US dollar, the most traded currency pair in the world, which it doesn't want to work uh, again today on, uh, on investing.com. Right. We're looking at the pound, guys. Usually they tend to do uh, similar. Yeah, 120.87 for the euro this afternoon, 120.88. And uh, 136, 72 for the pound, which started dropping sharply in the last hour or so. Okay, again, we see a lot of people watching us today. Good afternoon, people. Type your questions if you have any, any questions, and I will do my best to help. Okay, so 136.72 for the pound this afternoon with the uh, stochastic still open to the downside and the RSI not reaching the oversold levels just yet. There is potential to the downside, guys. However... Keep an eye on uh, on this trend line. Yeah, we saw the um, the the pound retesting this and uh, and moving slightly lower. Yeah, we might see a false breakout, or who knows, the breakout might be real. Yeah, one thirty six seventy two. If the downwards movement will continue, probably traders will move their take profits to the downside towards the one thirty six forty one. Yeah, trying to catch about uh, thirty pips out of this movement. Yeah, or why not even lower? One thirty six fourteen, one thirty six fifteen is expected if this uh, downward uh, movement will continue. Now, we're looking at USDJPY. We see a green start of the week for the the green buck. 
104.98 this afternoon for the USD versus the Japanese yen with the RSI and stochastic up into the overbought uh, levels. There is potential. There still is potential to the upside okay, for, uh, for USD JPY. On the other hand, we see the Aussie dollar losing ground after a retest of that 50 MA uh, to the upside earlier on. 0.7615 for the Aussie dollar with the RSI and the stochastic pointing lower. Now, if this downward movement will continue short term, probably traders will eye the 0.7590. 95 mark as that's the previous low and if this movement continues then they will probably lower their take profit target somewhere around 75.69 or uh 75.22 somewhere in the 75s right usd cad on the other hand again a, a green uh, green opening this afternoon on the us trading session for the us dollar uh 128.19 we see a bit of a push for the the usd cad probably traders are eyeing this uh, top at 128.71 this afternoon yeah with the rsi and the stochastic still pointing upwards still being open to what seems to be an interesting uh potential buy position as things stand right now let's see we need to wait for the markets to settle for a bit guys now uh, let's have a quick look at the S&P 500, which opened higher than uh, than it closed on Friday, but still below that uh, 200 moving average, 372.982, as things stand right now for the S&P 500, with the RSI and the stochastic pointing upwards. We have a few uh, names announcing today and tomorrow, guys, so uh, we should see a bit of movement yeah, on the S&P and the Dow. On the other hand, though, the fact that the U.S. Democrats uh, rejected Joe Biden's uh, proposal of $1.9 trillion as stimulus measures okay, might affect the U.S. Uh, indices. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's see what is happening with the Dow. Again, positive opening for the Dow. And we see the candlestick retracting half an hour into the U.S. trading session. 3.00.79.50 for the Dow Jones this afternoon. Once again, with the RSI and stochastic in uh, the oversold levels pointing upwards. However, we see this debt cross being being formed there let's see what uh, what might follow from here now this week guys or tomorrow we're going to have uh, about a hundred companies announcing a hundred companies that are part of the s p 500 okay some of them are part of the dow jones as well let's see if they manage to boost the the s p or the dow jones uh, price a bit Right, we're looking at the US dollar index, guys, once again on a one hour chart, um, 9084 for uh, the US dollar index this afternoon. Okay, we saw a negative opening. Uh, we see RSI stochastic turning around as things stand right now from the overbought levels, which uh, means we might see a tiny, tiny retest of that uh, 20 MA of that uh, blue line that you see there. Okay, and we take it from there. Overall, the dollar was supposed to strengthen today. We saw the USD CAD pair pushing higher. Okay, we saw USD JPY pushing, uh, pushing higher. So let's see what's going to happen. No, sorry, the USD CAD pushed lower, guys. USD JPY pushed a bit higher. Right, so let's see. Let's see what's going to happen with the US dollar index. So far, so good for uh, gold futures, guys. Gold is in an uptrend, if even if very shy right now. $1,868.10 for uh, gold futures half an hour into the uh, US trading session. There is a battle uh, up there between uh, buyers and sellers, guys. You see, we don't have many engulfing candlesticks. Okay, very short candlesticks and a lot of spikes up and down. There is a battle indeed. Okay, we see the RSI not being able to go up into the overbought uh, levels. Okay, we see stochastic somewhere, somewhere close to the overbought levels, but still shy. Let's see, let's see. Now, light crude, guys, and uh, brace for um, for silver. We're going to get to silver charts in a minute. Okay, 55.51 for uh, Brent oil futures this afternoon. We see a... Um, a retest to the upside, yeah, followed by a retest of that 200 moving average. If this movement will continue, probably there is more potential to the downside, yeah, than to the upside. Okay, very important level as the price uh, action is now uh, testing the 200 moving average, guys. So any drop below that 200 moving average might translate into a bit of selling power, okay? Uh, if the price gets rejected by the 200 MA, then we might see the price moving uh, moving higher. This is one probable movement for uh, Brent oil futures. Yeah, we might see a retest to the lows to around 54, 94, and then we might see a retest to the upside. Okay, at least as things stand right now. And now silver futures, guys, there we go. There is the rally in silver. Again, supposedly created by, by the gang on, uh, on Reddit. 
Okay, $29.44 for silver. We see a bit of a pullback. Probably the guys that created this uh, this amazing uh, rally are cashing out the profits right now. They started closing their positions. Therefore, um, don't be surprised if we're going to see a bit of a meltdown. Okay, I'm surprised why gold futures did not follow just yet. Just yet. We see gold trying to push higher, but the movement is nowhere near the one we see on uh, on the silver charts so if usually silver follows gold guys today we see gold trying to follow silver yes silver is way way ahead okay 2894 we're gonna get to the signals guys in a minute so don't go anywhere right and now everyone's favorite guys the good almighty bitcoin which is being uh, manipulated by uh, brave statements on uh, social media is uh, trading today at thirty-three thousand five hundred and seventy-one dollars after a massive uh, swing in um, buy sell uh, over the weekend. Okay, on Friday or Saturday, this uh, this happened when uh, some rich guy, again another rich guy, not only Elon Musk. Okay, we must have more rich guys on Earth that uh, might have tweeted something. As things stand right now, we see a retest. The price is still supported by the the two hundred MA on a one hour chart. However, we don't see a lot of buying power in the market anymore. Yeah, we see uh, two two tops roughly at the same level, and since then. We see the the price uh, moving moving lower. RSI stochastic are both pointing downwards as things stand right now. Let's get a better view on the Bitcoin. There we go. All right. On a four-hour chart, again, we see a red candlestick. So don't be surprised if we're going to see a retest of that 200 moving average around the $33,578. Okay. This is, again, from the technical point of view, guys. And uh, what I've taught in many, many years of trading, about 10 years, is that usually technical analysis on some assets weights heavily, uh, more heavily than um, than whatever news you might, uh, you might get. Right. Now, Ethereum, guys, in the same time, Okay, we see maybe, maybe uh, the beginning of a, of a downtrend for Ethereum, um, $1,314.76 this afternoon for Ethereum. Okay, even though it's in an uptrend, guys, we see uh, a bit of weakness here at the top. Okay, this might be translated as a double top, okay, which uh, usually is the trigger for the beginning of the downtrend. Okay, so don't be surprised if you're going to see a retest to the downside of that 200 MA at $1,131. Okay, somewhere there. Right, guys, once again, if you have questions, if you have anything you're struggling with regarding investments, online trading, cryptocurrencies, do let me know, type your comments, and I will see them live, and I will do my best to reply as soon as possible. Now, let's move on. Let's move on and have a quick look at some uh, trading signals uh, provided by investing.com this afternoon. Let's hope the markets have settled uh, by now. Okay, we're starting with Euro USD, guys, neutral on a five minutes and a 15 minutes chart, and the hourly and daily remain a strong sell. Okay, we're looking at the pound versus the US dollar with uh, three red this afternoon, strong sell uh, positions, even though the daily remains a strong buy. Okay, we see the uh, USD JPY strengthening four uh, strong buy positions on the USD JPY. We saw the rally on the charts a minute ago. USD CHF is pulling back, apparently, strong sell on a five minute chart sell on a 15 minute but the hourly and daily remain a strong buy so we might only witness a bit of a pullback as things uh, stand right now and then the price might shoot up as the us dollar seems to be strengthening against all its other peers the aussie dollar took a beating again strong sell all red for the uh, the aussie dollar this afternoon versus the us dollar we saw the euro um, on a strong buy uh, versus the the pound. It was in a strong sell all over the the chart uh, half an hour ago. So apparently now traders are uh, coming on the market with uh, with buy positions. The daily remains a strong sell though. So keep an eye on those uh, those tops in the left hand side on the euro GBB chart and. The price might turn around from there. USD CAD on the other hand, four strong buy for the US dollar. Okay, the Kiwi dollar is a sell versus the uh, the US dollar. The euro, strong buy versus the Japanese yen. What is strengthening the euro this afternoon? I'm really curious. Yeah, and the euro again, strong buy versus the Swiss franc. On the other hand, guys, the pound is uh, nosediving versus the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc with strong sell indications on three of the four time frames. This is what's happening on the currencies uh, side of things. Let's have a look at commodities, guys. See what investing.com sees uh, on commodities this afternoon. Come on, please load. 
Okay, I don't know if you notice. Sometimes the charts can be um, quite heavy, heavy delayed. There we go. Right, gold and silver. Uh, overall, we see a potential strong buy position on gold. Nothing is happening yet. Neutral as things stand right now, but on the hourly and daily charts, we're looking at strong buy for gold, strong buy for silver. Okay, which is uh, currently pulling back a bit. Now, copper is uh, set with uh, all red for strong sell positions on copper this afternoon. Crude oil, WTI, and Brent oil again stuck in a strong sell on uh, two uh, time frames. Natural gas is on a strong buy as the winter seems to be very, very heavy in the U.S. Okay, so usually when the winter is uh, is heavy, people uh, tend to purchase a lot of gas yeah, for um, heating up their homes. So in heavy winter, usually natural gas price tends to go up. U.S. wheat, guys, strong sell on the U.S. wheat, which done uh, very well the previous week. Right now, quick look at the U.S. indices, guys. Let's have a quick look and see how Investing.com sees the indices this afternoon. Mixed, 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 apart from the Dow Jones, which has a strong uh, sell indication on all four time frames. Okay, a lot of mixed signals. The markets uh, seem to be... Um, to be very dodgy this Monday. We see the Russell 2000, the small cap 2000, again with a, with a strong sell on a five minute and a strong sell on an hourly chart. Okay, let's see. Let's see what's happening. I'm going to have a quick look at, um, at stocks right now. The US stocks, the Wall Street stocks, maybe, maybe there is an indication for some uh, some interesting long positions nope again on the stock side of things uh, a lot of red on the charts with exxon mobil with uh, four strong sell indications apple three strong sell indications procter and gamble and ibm again all red four uh, strong sell indications right a lot of red uh, on the charts this afternoon guys general electric and jp morgan are expected to drop with four strong sell at&t and chevron once again are expected to drop with four strong sell indications the only one that seems to be doing a bit better is uh, intel guys which has three strong buy out of the four and uh, Citigroup and Bank of America, once again, four strong sell indications on all four time frames, as well as Walmart. Okay, now four green for Alphabet A. All right, the, the ex Google. This is what uh, what is happening on the markets today, guys. This is the uh, the indication from Investing.com, and these are the charts. Okay, provided uh, by Investing.com. Again, there seems to be a bug on uh, on the Euro USD on the charts. The other ones uh, work. Okay, the pound, which again is uh, is dragging uh, is dragging heavily. Right, okay, guys, ladies, gentlemen, traders, happy Monday, everyone. This was it from my side today. Join me again tomorrow for another round of market talks, and who knows, maybe I have another guest for you. Until then, remember to trade responsibly, and may all your trades be in the money.